Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on the market rundown. So we have our daily higher low formed in the S&P 500. We are still in a daily uptrend. Again, I am looking bullish as long as we are in a daily uptrend. If we were to drop down after being unable to break the all-time high and see a lower low, we would lose the daily uptrend and that would change our perspective. So I'm using SPX for the all-time high because again, SPY has that adjustment for the dividend. SPX, if we get an all-time high, will hit it before SPY does because it had that artificial drop. So 29.6420 is the level that the bulls are going to have to get to. And at this point, we're looking at under a 1% move needed. So certainly possible that we see a new all-time high this coming week. We have the G20 going on over the weekend. Honestly, I have no idea how the market's going to respond to it. You can find a headline that's bullish and then find a headline that's the exact opposite and bearish. So we'll see what the market decides. As always, price action is all that matters. The headlines don't matter. And we'll see overnight here. Let's see, Sunday... 9 a.m. We got a while to go until 6 p.m. when we'll have the futures letting us know. So all-time high is resistance. Support is down at 2,913. Those are the only two levels that I personally care about as we head into this week. IWM made a very significant bounce. There's going to be a key resistance test here at 156.22. If that level fails, it's a potential top fishing play on Monday. So it's, it depends on where we open and where we stand pre-market. But if the bulls are unable to break that level, we're going to look for some healthy hourly consolidation after a very significant two-day move. We would look for a daily higher low and a tightening range. But the fact that the bulls, after five days of solid pullback, made it all back in just two days, that is notable and certainly favors the bulls to be able to recover that much that quickly. So even if we don't make that break on Monday, we're still going to be watching for the potential that we make that break later in the week and try and head back up to our summer highs, 161.11 will be the next level after 156.22. QQQ hasn't really been doing a whole lot for the bulls, hasn't really been doing much the last few days. Multiple inside bars, and the inside bar did break bullish, but there was a lack of follow through. We only broke bullish by 21 cents. So you could essentially say we are still in this tightening sideways range for the last three days, and the bulls are gonna have to get over 187.33 to be a convincing break, and then 189.77 is the recent high. We're at a daily uptrend as well on QQQ with our new daily higher low of 184.65. As long as that level holds, the daily uptrend is intact, in my opinion. XLF. So after a bear break with no follow through, we had the bank stress test pass and we had the bulls respond very well to that. So a bear break by a couple pennies and then straight to a resistance break for the bulls. So we're looking back up at the summer highs for the financial sector. 28.14 is the next level we'll be looking at. And again, the base of support now is down at 26.93. And the bulls are well above that level, so pretty comfortable. XLV. So also an inside bar that broke bullish on Friday, but not a ton of follow through. Still in a daily uptrend. Our new daily higher low is 91.50 for the bulls to keep full control. And we'll see if the bulls can get closer to 94.33, the recent high. Right now, in terms of where weakness could come from in this market, XLV and QQQ are standing out to me as names that have not proven their strength, whereas IWM, XLF, and the biotech sector, XBI, all have had some very significant strength into the close of this previous week. So here's XBI. And again, what I feel the market did here for XBI is pulled back saying, okay, we got to price in the potential bearish reaction to the democratic debates we have coming. And then after the first one, they said, oh, that's it. That's not bad. And then on Friday, they said, okay, we're in the clear now. And we're heading back up to resistance. So just like IWM, there is a potential play off this resistance. Again, it depends on what Monday pre-market is doing. But 88.77 is the key level. If we reject, we're just going to look to pull back for a higher low. And the bulls still have the daily uptrend in their favor at this point. Even though it was a significant pullback, the bulls made a lot of that back. So 83.33 is our new daily higher low on XBI. And if we get over 88.77, there's some nice space to try and make it back to the spring highs that XBI has pulled back significantly from, but is trying to recover. 
the VIX. So we have pulled back and we have the end of the day run on, on look at the S&P 500 the last 10 minutes. So a very notable huge surge into the end of June and the end of the week. So the VIX there on that same thing, look at what the VIX did. Just an absolute pullback in the last half hour of trading. And so now we're looking at, can the bulls change the daily trend? Have to hold 1320 and then see a break of 1670 for any sustained momentum on that trend change attempt. Still watching the bigger picture here. And you could draw some trend lines. I generally am not the trend line user, but I would be putting it somewhere along the lines of right around here. So almost a descending triangle. And we did drop significantly to a lower low here, but the bulls did buy that dip. So I'll keep an eye on that potential tightening range and we'll see if the bulls are able to hold support and then break resistance, which would mean that the S&P 500 is very likely losing its daily uptrend at that point. So strength is in IWM, QQQ, and XLF. And we have the bulls in, in actually I take that back. So strength is in IWM, XLF, and XBI, there is not any convincing strength the last couple of days in the uh, the healthcare sector, XLV, QQQ. So those two sectors need to show us something in order for the S&P 500 to be headed back to the all-time high. Pretty much green day on QQQ Monday, and we'll be looking at XPX being right on the verge of that all-time high. Hope you had a good weekend. We'll continue to check back in. Going to do a commodities video here in just a bit. Certainly a lot of action in the bio or the Bitcoin space, cryptocurrency, and then we've got the marijuana stocks. Lots of opportunity out there. Going to be a fun second half of 2019. Let's get it started on Monday. It's the season of baby birds. This mother's sitting on a nest, and I'm pretty sure there's eggs underneath her, so sometime in the next couple weeks, we'll have some babies to watch there. Turkey babies, geese babies, duck babies, bird babies. I need to get a bunch of feeders put up. That's the weekend task for now.